How the Romans Dressed – A Journey Through the History and Culture of Roman Clothing and Fashion Clothing and fashion in Roman society and culture served far beyond mere functionality, painting a rich tapestry of societal norms, status identifiers, and personal preferences. These expressions of self and society were intricately interwoven with Roman climate and geography, and varied significantly across regions and periods. In the Mediterranean climate of Rome, clothing was designed to accommodate warm summers and mild winters, with materials ranging from cool linen to warm wool. However, the diversity within the expansive Roman Empire led to a rich variety of style and materials influenced by local climates and resources. Clothing also played a critical role in defining social status. Before we proceed further, don't forget to subscribe to the Roman Chronicles. Let's get back to the video. Distinctive garments signified one's rank, occupation, or even moral values, such as the toga worn by Roman citizens, the stola by matronly women, or uniform of a soldier. Moreover, fashion trends often followed the whims of influential figures, such as emperors and empresses, further signifying the power dynamics of Roman society. The sources of information on Roman clothing and fashion are as diverse as the garments themselves. Literary texts, such as those by authors like Seneca, Ovid, and Juvenal, offer detailed descriptions of Roman attire. Meanwhile, visual arts like sculptures, mosaics, and paintings are an invaluable source of understanding the Roman aesthetic sense. They provide visual documentation of the styles, colors, and accessories that were prevalent during different periods. Through this exploration of clothing and fashion in Roman society and culture, we will unravel the threads of an ancient civilization, understanding its people not just by their great feats and historic events, but also by their everyday life, one garment at a time. The Many Styles of Roman Garments The variety of clothing and fashion in ancient Rome was as diverse as the people who wore them. Different classes, professions, genders, and ages all had their unique apparel that embodied their societal roles and personal identities. At the heart of Roman clothing were the tunics. These were worn by all classes, genders, and ages, acting as a sort of universal garment. Men's tunics typically reached the knees, while women's and children's often extended down to the ankles. The toga, perhaps the most iconic piece of Roman attire, was a garment unique to Roman citizens. A large semicircular woolen cloth it was carefully draped over the body and was a symbol of Roman citizenship. However, the complexity of donning a toga often meant it was worn on formal occasions. Different types of togas were also worn to denote different statuses or roles within society, like the toga candida, worn by political candidates on the toga pula worn during periods of mourning. Women, particularly married ones, traditionally wore a stola, a long, sleeveless tunic often worn over another tunic. Over this, women might wear a pala, a large rectangular shawl draped around the body. Footwear was also indicative of status. Senators wore red shoes, while patrician men and equestrians had their own distinct styles. Soldiers wore heavy-duty sandals known as caligae, designed for long marches. In terms of materials, the most common was wool, valued for its durability and versatility. Linen was also popular, especially in the warmer parts of the empire, while silk, imported from the east, was a luxury fabric affordable only to the wealthy. Leather was commonly used for footwear and belts. Color, too, was a significant factor in Roman clothing. Purple, due to the expense and complexity of its production, was associated with the imperial class and high-ranking officials. White was favored for togas as a symbol of purity and virtue. Red, yellow, and other colors were also used, their access and preference often tied to one's social status. Through these diverse pieces of clothing, we can see not just the fashion of a bygone era, but also the societal norms, hierarchies, and identities that they represented. Each piece, from the humble tunic to the distinguished toga, tells a story of the people who once wore them. The Most Important and Popular Clothing and Fashion Items in Ancient Rome In the vast tapestry of ancient Roman clothing and fashion, certain items stand out for their significance and symbolism. These pieces were associated with specific occasions, roles, and traditions, serving as silent markers of societal norms and rituals. The toga, for instance, was not merely a garment, it was a symbol of Roman citizenship. Particularly notable was the toga candida, a whitened toga worn by political candidates during elections, its brightness symbolizing the purity and virtue of the candidate. Another variant, the toga pretexta, Adorned with a purple border was worn by magistrates and freeborn boys until they came of age. 
Women's clothing also bore significant societal meaning. The stola, a long tunic-like garment, was traditionally worn by married women, signifying their status as matrons. The stola matronalis, often worn during weddings, was a specific variant that symbolized the sanctity of the marital union. Accompanying the stola, women often wore the pala, a large rectangular shawl. Not merely a fashion accessory, the pala was a symbol of modesty and decorum, especially when worn over the head in a public setting. For the Roman military, the caliga, a heavy-duty sandal, was a distinctive part of their uniform. With its hobnailed soles and open design, it was an apt footwear for long marches and rough terrains, reflecting the ruggedness of military life. In the realm of accessories, two items are particularly noteworthy. The bula, a locket-like amulet, was given to freeborn children at birth, believed to provide protection from evil spirits. It was worn until the child came of age, a crucial rite of passage in Roman society. The fibula, a brooch used for fastening garments, served a practical yet meaningful purpose. While its primary function was to secure clothing, such as a toga or cloak, its design and material often reflected the wearer's wealth and status, with those made of gold or silver being the most coveted. These clothing items and their associated traditions reveal the depth and complexity of Roman society. They served as silent communicators, reflecting an individual's identity, status, and societal role, all intricately stitched into the fabric of Roman culture. The Power and Politics of Roman Dress In ancient Rome, clothing and fashion were not just about style or personal preference. They were a language in themselves, a way of expressing and reinforcing Roman values and identity. They served as tangible indicators of Roman principles such as dignity, honor, order, hierarchy, and unity. The toga, a key symbol of Roman citizenship, represented the dignity and honor associated with being a Roman citizen. Its complex draping required careful attention, reinforcing the value Romans placed on order and propriety. Similarly, the stola worn by matrons reflected the Roman society's respect for the institution of marriage and the family hierarchy. However, this language of clothing wasn't devoid of conflict and controversy. The toga, for instance, was often at the center of political rivalries. As togas were associated with specific social statuses, individuals aspiring for higher social ranks would sometimes illegitimately don the toga associated with that rank. This led to the sumptuary laws that regulated the wear and display of certain types of luxury goods, including clothing. Religious disputes were also woven into the fabric of Roman clothing. Certain religious roles and rituals necessitated specific attire, leading to conflicts if these norms were violated. For example, the Vestial Virgins, priestesses of the goddess Vesta, had their own distinctive attire, violation of which was considered sacrilege. Furthermore, clothing was a source of social tension. The use of rare and expensive materials like silk and purple dye was often a point of contention, reflecting the economic disparities within Roman society. Moralists of the time often criticized extravagant dressing as a sign of moral decay and a distraction from the Roman virtues of simplicity and austerity. Clothing and fashion, like any cultural expression, were also prone to manipulation for personal or political gains. Emperors, for instance, would occasionally modify dress codes to suit their political agendas or to reflect the ethos of their reign. They were also used to mark out and distinguish foreigners and slaves, consolidating social division. Clothing and fashion were a mirror to a Roman society, reflecting its values, tensions, and changes over time. They were an integral part of the societal discourse, weaving together threads of identity, status, and power. The Legacy and Transformation of Roman Dress The legacy and transformation of Roman clothing and fashion provide a fascinating lens into the threads of continuity and change that span across history. Many Roman clothing items survived, changed, or were adopted by later periods and cultures, reflecting the enduring influence of Roman satirial traditions. With the Christianization of Rome and the eventual fall of the empire, shifts in clothing and fashion mirrored the societal and religious transformations. The Roman toga, once a symbol of Roman citizenship, gradually fell out of use, supplanted by the more practical and modest tunic. The tunic, a common garment in Roman times was adopted and modified by the Christian clergy into the cassock, a garment that remains a significant part of clerical attire today. Women's clothing also underwent transformation. The pala, a Roman woman's shawl, evolved into the veil, a symbol of modesty and piety in Christian and other religious traditions. 
It continues to be an important piece of attire in certain cultures and religious contexts. Even everyday items like shoes and brooches left their imprints. Roman military sandals, known as caligae, influenced the design of footwear in various cultures. The fibula, a brooch for fastening garments, survived through the ages. Its practicality and decorative potential appreciated by cultures far and wide. Roman clothing and fashion also influenced various forms of art and literature. Roman attire has been a recurrent theme in Western art, with sculptures, paintings, and mosaics often featuring figures in togas, tunics, stolas, or caligae. In literature, Roman clothing serves as a symbol and metaphor, with writers from Shakespeare to modern authors referencing the toga, the stola, or the purple of Roman nobility. The influence even extends to music and folklore. For example, the Roman festival of Saturnalia, where slaves and masters switched places and slaves wore the felt Pilius hat, inspired a number of songs and stories, becoming a metaphor for world upside-down scenarios. The legacy of Roman clothing and fashion is remarkably enduring and transformative. Through centuries of cultural exchanges and adaptations, it has woven itself into the fabric of Western civilization, impacting religious traditions, social norms, and artistic expressions. As we bid farewell to the world of Roman dress, we invite you to reflect on the ways in which clothing and fashion continue to shape our own identities and societies. How does clothing serve as a form of self-expression and a reflection of cultural values in your own life? We would love to hear your thoughts and insights. Please share your reflections in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the garments of ancient Rome. May the vibrant threads of Roman clothing continue to inspire and inform our understanding of the rich tapestry of human culture.